Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Yes, this is a general reading. I, did I say that already? Yes, I probably did. Um, you gotta excuse me. So <laughs> just a little bit of a heads up here. Um, I'm noticing that now that I'm not in school, I'm waking up later, naturally. Um, it's not something that I'm trying to do, although I am enjoying it. <laughs> um, but it's making when I get these daily readings out a little inconsistent. When I started morning coffee, I wanted this to be something that, you know, you could enjoy as you were starting your day. Um, and it's, I have to admit, it's like, even though, if it, and I say this like it's not early, but it's, it's like almost 8.30 in the morning here now that I'm, that when I'm like actually starting to record this. Normally I would be recording this at like six in the morning. Um, but I, I just need time. I need time to acclimate, I guess, now that my life is changing. But I just wanted to, you know, let you guys know that the, the time that these are going to be out is going to be inconsistent at, for a little bit. Um, I'm going to do my best to get up and get these done in the morning because I really do enjoy doing them. And also, I like getting up in the morning. Like, I like mornings because I'm weird. <laughs> anyway, so, um, okay, but with that aside, keep in mind that this is a timeless reading. Yes, so whenever you find this reading um, and it resonates for you, it's that, that's the message for you in that moment, okay? All right, so let's get into the pre-shuffle here. Um, only one card came out. Well, I only took one card because this card came out and then I, was, and I just felt like... I could stop there. I needed to stop there. Um, and it's <clears throat> it's the Three of Swords. Um, but, that, ooh, it's kind of dark, actually. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, it's the Three of Swords. But this actually seems like a really positive way of looking at this. Or uh, it feels like a positive energy, even though, you know, you're dealing with heartbreak here. Um, this side would be a little more negative. Um, I mean, in, in, and um, actually, it's something that I do want to explain because somebody was asking me this question um, and I answered her yesterday, but she was asking with the vice versa deck, which is the deck that I'm using for these readings now, for the morning coffee readings. She was asking if one side of the card was actually the reversal depiction rather it, um, instead of actually like the reversal being um, like upside right side up upside down or anything and actually with this deck neither side is meant to be a positive or a negative it's meant to be one perspective or one way of viewing the situation so with this card with the three of swords for example the, the original way of looking at this card is um, three swords piercing through a heart, um, you know, it's a really, it's probably raining um, in some decks, um, and it just, it symbolizes heartbreak. That's one way of looking at this. But the other way of looking at this is depicted like this, with now you see this man who's, or this soldier who's, has his shield pierced like this. It looks like he survived an attack um, because he's still alive. Um, and you see this flower here. I don't know what type of flower it is, but you see that flower that's growing there? Um, to me, so, so, so you have the initial attack or the initial heartbreak here, but on this side, it looks like he's almost like reflecting on it and healing from it. And with the rain falling down on him, it kind of looks like some sort of cleansing or clearing, right? feels like that and then you have this flower that's growing here which is giving way to new life whereas the rose in this on this side is all destroyed like just completely trampled over now either now if you so let's for for sake of the argument here let's look at this from a reversed point of view reversed with the original side is you're dealing with the heartbreak you are um, you're stuck on it maybe, maybe you're not even aware of why your heart's broken. For just, for example, that's just a few of the examples. If you look at it this way, 
with now i i actually i i keep in mind they there is a book that comes with this deck and I haven't actually finished reading through all of the Minor Arcana. I wanted to read through the book so that I could get the perspective of the authors and the illustrators um, to add to my arsenal. So I haven't really gotten here. So I'm going strictly on intuition here. This is just how I'm seeing this card right now. Um, but with this side, with, you know, now the guy is reflecting, he's looking back on his shield and everything, and, you know, there's a new life growing. In reverse, this could represent you needing to let go, you needing to actually look at the situation so that you can heal it, right? That's just, so that's just just, just like a, a, a little way of, I hope that made sense, but that was just, I just wanted to explain um, kind of how the deck works and how I'm using it personally, okay? Five, five, five. All right, so getting back to the pre-shuffle energies, it seems to me that the energy here is of reflection. And that is absolutely in alignment with all the stuff that's been going on. Well, I, what I talked about yesterday, um, about how, you know, all of last week, and I'm gonna be quite honest, it's still happening this week for me personally, but all of last week has been, was a really strong purging week. And the synchronicities in association with that have really been through the roof. Um, so, I really do feel like you, many of you or the individuals in the collective that I am channeling for at this moment are doing some serious purging, but the, op, the, the main word that Spirit wanted to use in that sense, you guys are really doing some major healing, major, major healing. And I really do feel like you are either doing this or you need to be doing this, but looking, you're looking at the wounds, you're looking at the damage, you're looking at the drama, you're looking at the turmoil. Instead of just hiding from it, Three of Swords could really represent your hiding, you're just harboring pain or you're hiding from it or maybe not even dealing with it. Instead, it looks like you're facing it, which is bringing a cycle to completion. Now, this card came out this way in, on this side before, um, and it came out last week. And I was explaining that when you look at the card in this way, and in the, uh, it looks like someone is crossing, going through, or looking through a portal, yes? Um, in the book, they describe this as, this side as, just kind of trying to rush through things without really allowing the cycle to complete itself. Whereas if you look at it, oh look, there's that King of <laughs> there's that King of Pentacles again. Um, but when you look at it this way, the, the person is just going with the flow, joyously um, closing out the cycle. I, I, in all honesty, in all honesty, I just feel like. Well, for some of you, you might really want to just rush through this. I don't. I, I honestly want to say that you're you're actively closing out the cycle because you are looking at this stuff. And then on the other side, well, yeah. Um, but I, I do feel like some of you may may still be trying to rush through this and not really giving yourself the, the or the, at least the cycle the time that it needs to close out. Because on the other side of the deck is the Nine of Swords here. Um, and it very much looks like, yeah, it very much looks like this guy is just consumed with all of these swords that are illusionary. It's all in your mind, okay? But also, the Nine of Swords here, I really do feel like is representing all of the pain and the heartbreak and the mental anguish that you have basically built up over time that you're now having to face so that you can release it. Okay, uh, what I think is happening with the world, uh, this side of the world here, what this is saying is uh, you're completing the cycle, but it's not quite over yet. Um, don't rush this. These things cannot be rushed. Healing cannot be rushed, Spirit is saying. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, and I do find it funny that this King of Pentacles <laughs> is here again, even though he is reversed. Um, he's showing himself 
This King of Pentacles has been coming out since last week, consistently. And he came out yesterday with the Queen of Pentacles. Um, I think what the King of Pentacles reversed could could suggest here is um, refinement. You're actually, you're really working very hard to get yourself stable, grounded, um, and <clears throat> manifested, all that stuff. I mean, yesterday, the, the message was that we, you know, we are very well manifested, you know, with the King and Queen of Pentacles that came out. Um, but the King of Pentacles is in reverse coming through like that was just, to me in this moment, is just saying that there's still some work that needs to be done in order to really heal yourself fully, okay? To really maximize that, that solid foundation for yourself, yeah? All right, guys. <sighs> Okay, so let's get started with the official, official message. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, we're going to go with four shuffles for this today. Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. Tuesday, July 9th. Twenty nineteen. Three and last shuffle. Four. All right, kids. All righty, let's see what we've got for today. Tuesday, July 9th, twenty nineteen. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Okay, ooh. Whoa. All right. Interesting. Okay, overall energy here, we do have the Three of Wands in reverse with the Fool in reverse. All right. Um, and then... There's this, which is the Page of Swords, which has fallen off the table. It's reversed, but it's the f face. We can see his face. Um, but the first card that came out here is the world, again. But this time, look, it's this side. This is someone taking... This is So what this is saying in this instance is that someone is taking action and working on completing the cycle. Wow. So what we're talking about here is um, what is closing out this cycle? I guess for some of you, you need to know what's happening in order to fully let go of this. So that's what that's what's coming through here. Okay, um, you have the King of Wands uh, with his back turned. You also have the Knight of Swords, the Page of Swords, both in reverse, and then you have the Four of Cups. I really feel like a ship has sailed. Because look, in this depiction of the Four of Cups here, um, somebody missed the boat. And it was this King of Wands character. This person, this individual here, this King of Wands, whoever this rep represents for you. It could be a fire sign, specifically a Leo. Um, or Aries or Sagittarius. <laughs> it could be your divine masculine. 
I mean, this is a general reading. If that resonates with you, then go for it. I feel like this King of Wands is sulking. Whoever this King of Wands is, this could be you also. To be quite honest, and not going to lie, this absolutely could be you, the viewer. Um, but it feels like the King of Wands is sulking. It feels like he's having, he might even have be having a little bit of a temper tantrum. Um, he... This feels slightly immature, you guys, because what I'm feeling from this King of Wands is like he would rather turn his back and pout than and like have a temper tantrum in a way. He would rather do that than actually like face something, own up to something. I'm trying to get some more clarity on um, or understanding of what the Knight of Swords and the Page of Swords is because it could be that someone's not fighting for something anymore, that someone's not paying attention anymore. It also could be, <laughs> it also could be an energy of someone wanting to maybe make someone believe that they don't care, that they're not fighting anymore, that they for something anymore, that they're not paying attention anymore. Maybe they're trying to convince themselves that they don't care, but they still do. They really still do. This Three of Wands here, um, in reverse, on this side too, Oh, shoot. And then underneath, wow. Uh, okay, I'll get there in a second. Um, the Three of Wands here. To me, look at it. See? He's he's armored. He's, he, you know, he's chosen a wand that's, you know, riddled with power now and, and you know, and, and manifestation energy. At least that's what I'm seeing. He's got the the um yin and yang it looks like a yin and yang symbol but it's look it's fire and water so it's just but that that represents it's similar to what yin yin and yang is they're opposites okay um he's got that balance it what it feels like is whatever opportunity that was missed was absolutely in alignment was absolutely part of one's path i'm even getting a magician energy from this card okay um, but the opportunity was missed. And then on the other side here, you have the fool in reverse. Okay. Someone just, someone just did not take the leap of faith. Someone just did not trust enough to take the leap of faith. And it could absolutely have to do with a relationship. The two of cups was underneath this three of, uh, uh, three of wands. And the two of cups here is, this is the... I guess you could say this is the main side. I don't think there is a main side, but on this side here, it's dark. And that's not necessarily bad. It just could mean that there was not enough light to illuminate, to see clearly. What I'm getting from this card is this relationship um, was driven by intuition, okay? Um, it wasn't... It probably wasn't public. It probably wasn't, so probably someone just didn't want to go public about it or didn't want to, maybe even didn't want to acknowledge it consciously. But subconsciously, either both of you or one of you, but I feel like it was most likely both of you, were on a subconscious level, most of, both of you were very, very aware of the circumstances between the two of you, of this relationship, whatnot, whatever. But someone did not take, did not follow through three of wands, did not follow through with the plan, did not follow through with the, um, with taking action on something that was very much in alignment with the path, 
okay? Now, I'm kind of mm, I'm kind of stopping myself a little bit there because following through with the plan. Well, part of me and I think I don't think this is something coming from spirit. I just feel like this is me personally asking this question. Was this mishap, was this missed opportunity part of the plan all along? And as I was answer, asking that question, I heard an answer, yes, it was. Because this feels like a situation in which someone needed, well, obviously somebody needed to learn the lesson or I, it, honestly, or it really wouldn't have happened. But I, I do kind of feel like, I do find, kind of feel like this was part of the plan all along, which makes sense. So, okay, let's say we're talking about a twin flame situation. This is separation. Separation is part of the journey. Ultimately, it's bringing closure here. And I do feel like it's bringing closure for both sides of the equation. I just can't, I can't get over, I can't help it, but I can't get over the fact that this King of Wands just feels like he's sulking. <laughs> like he's sitting there pouting, but he's too proud to show you. So his back is turned and it's nighttime. So you couldn't, so like his back is turned. So you can't see his face. It's nighttime. So even if you could see his face, you probably couldn't see it all too clearly. And I kind of, I'm kind of getting a, a, a sense of, you, you also couldn't see the tears running down his face. But he's too proud to show you. Now, we're going to cross over into the clarification section here, but I am going to clarify specifically, okay? Um, this is, I'm going to start with clarification, and then I'm just going to go to overall closing guidance. Because I want to clarify the Knight of Swords and the Page of Swords here. What I'm getting from the Knight of Swords and the Page of Swords so far is that there's a sense of immaturity that's being released ultimately. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting here, but I really want to clarify it. Give me a second, I'm checking golden, okay. We're going to go with the Golden Universal Tarot today. But I really want to get some more clarity on what exactly the Knight of Swords and the Page of Swords mean. I also kind of get the feeling that someone is really giving up the fight. Whatever ego battle was going on in the past, I think that's being released now on both sides. And, some, and, and because of that, especially for the individual that is represented by this King of Wands here, that's what's causing the realization of how someone really missed the boat. Because I think there was an energy in the past in which someone didn't care what they said or what they did. Someone didn't care how much they hurt somebody else or how damaging their actions or behaviors were or how cutting their words may have been, how careless how destructive their, their conscious carelessness was. Because of their pride and their ego. Because they thought, well, I got it like that. I don't care. I mean, whatever. It's, it doesn't matter. They'll just come back anyway. I mean, we are destined to be together, aren't we? <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, look at how destined we're be, we are to be together now, buddy. That ship has sailed. Why? Because you wanted to be a narcissistic piece of shit. You wanted to break so-and-so's heart this way, six, 16 ways till Sunday, thinking, oh, it's fine. We'll just come back together anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, that's cute. That's real cute. And now you're left with your choices, watching that sit sailboat just sail right on without you on it. Ooh. 
Okay, so that's a really, that's a really, that's a hard lesson learned, isn't it? It surely, surely is. One more shuffle, and then let's get some clarification on this Knight of Swords, Page of, page of Swords energy. Hmm. On, uh, with all of that said, though, guys, I really, something really tells me that it, it's, it's over, but, like, like, something is over, and I, and, and the, and the narcissistic behaviors, the extreme selfishness, the narcissistic tendencies, whatnot, whatever, that's what's really coming to an end here, okay? So even if you're on the other side of this equation, whereas you're that ship that has sailed on, keep in mind, your ego and, and pride may be getting in the way too. Yes, we understand that you're hurt and you probably have every reason to be as angry as you may be. But you have to keep your ego in check too because you have to remember that we are all closing out these toxic cycles, okay? Everybody. And even if you were on the receiving side of this situation, you're not immaculate. You're not completely innocent here. You did feed into this cycle in some way. So you have your own things that you need to close out as well, okay? But let's get this clarity here. Um, first of all, the Knight of Cups caught my attention before and then I shuffled once more and it's still here on the bottom of the deck. Someone does want to make some sort of peace offering, I feel like. This does kind of feel like a reconciliatory energy of the Page of Cups, but it's the Knight of Cups, so there is a, a, a bit more maturity in this. All right, keep that in mind. Regardless of whether or not someone actually takes action or you actually see this in in this person or in somebody, I do kind of feel like there is a there is a deeper sense of maturity here of remorse. Of really kind of starting to or trying to take some sort of responsibility for one's actions. But that's that's like especially with this King of Wands energy and this pridefulness, that's very, very, very deep underneath the surface. Okay, so you probably are not even sensing it, let alone seeing it, okay? But that feeling's kind of wiggling its way in there <laughs> for somebody. But let's get this clarity on the Knight and Page of Swords here, please, Spirit. What do these Knight and Page of Swords represent? Okay, you have the Six of Swords so far. Ooh, with the Empress. I'm going to stop right there. Holy shit. I told you, I told you somebody's maturing with the King of Cups underneath the deck. Check it out, y'all. Check it out. We really could be talking about Twin Flames here, all right? Because now the Empress is here. And the Empress would represent the Divine Feminine. The King of Wands would represent the Divine Masculine. Oh my God. And I think, I think, because I, now I'm seeing it in this Three of Wands here, this individual kind of represents the Emperor. So yes, Divine Masculine, this was in alignment with you. And it, you know what? It, it still is in alignment with you because the situation isn't really over. Now we're just going through the hard purge, the deep purge, and it's going to take some time. So think about it this way, guys. Um, depending on how deep these wounds are or how much resistance is in the situation or whatnot, this could take years for someone to really close out and purge and really finally be done with. That's why it is so important on these journeys, especially on these divine partnership journeys, that expectation is eradicated. Okay, now getting back to this. What I heard with this, okay, is that someone finally didn't finally get the message until the Empress completely disconnected herself. 
And we're not even talking like moved away and was just like, oh, love and light, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm still gonna send you love even though you're you're going through your cycle. I'm s sitting here holding space for you and blah, blah. No, that is not what happened here. This empress said, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, I'm out. And pieced the fuck out. Like completely severed all kinds of ties, probably burned down a few bridges in the process. Bridges that would have kept you connected to this empress and completely disconnected herself. Did everything that she could to sever any ties, even though she's never going to be able to completely disconnect herself from you because she cannot disconnect herself from her own self. Empress, you know this is right. But she did everything she could to stop thinking about you, to stop dreaming about you, to stop, to, to maybe even try and forget about you. Of course, to no avail, she still thinks about you every day. <laughs> But she's very, very disconnected. Like, she is so far gone, so very distant here. Somebody did not get the message. Somebody did not lay down their sword, release their fight, release the pettiness, the argumentativeness, all of that stuff. Somebody didn't finally grow up or mature until the Empress completely walked away. That finally either is getting someone or got someone to start taking some sort of responsibility. King of Cups. So the energies that I was seeing with the Knight, I'm sorry, the King of Wands here with his back turned and it feels like he's sulking and it kind of feels like he's crying his eyes out. But you wouldn't see it because he's turned his back and it's nighttime. But that King of Wands is all up in his emotions. King of Cups. This is a really hard message. I mean, it's not hard, it's just somewhat depressing. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna get some, uh, some more clarification. Uh, a closing guidance. <clears throat> what the hell do we do with this, spirit? With all this, okay, all that is said and done. All right, fine. Now what? We'll tell you, they say. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> okay. All right. Damn. That's enough. Okay. Damn. Well, you have the Six of Swords again. Um... And you have the Four of Cups again, that flew out. It flew out in the reverse though. This is not as much of a missed opportunity than that you m might think it is. Not as much of a missed opportunity, I should think. The Four of Cups in reverse flying out this way, what this is, the, literally the energy is saying to me, stop thinking this is a missed opportunity. Stop thinking the boat has completely sailed. Stop thinking that you're never gonna be able to, to reconcile or try this again or whatnot, whatever. Let go of that because it's not as bad as you think. Yes, this might have been a really, this situation may really have gone south. It may look like it's so bad between the two of you that you will never, ever, ever reconcile. Hence, the boat has shailed, sailed, the, 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 the ship has sailed, the opportunity is missed, it's gone forever. Bullshit. Why? Unconditional love is the central focus of all of this. 
a missed opportunity has given rise to the opportunity of a lifetime, and that is for deep cleansing and deep healing. So stop thinking this is a completely missed opportunity because it's not, okay? You have the moon, yep, wow, the two of swords, wow, with the empress again and the tower. Here's the advice, guys. The divine feminine in this situation really shook some, some shit up. <laughs> Congratulations, divine feminine. You really have accomplished your mission here. And actually, to be quite honest with you, it, it's only going to get worse, I guess you could say. And I'm putting that in air quotes, worse. Um, because we are entering the age of the divine feminine now. I believe, I'm not sh exactly sure. Um, I think we're still in that last 13th moon. Um, all of this is information that Aluna Ash puts out. So if you're curious as to what I'm talking about here, I would go check out her channel. I don't know which videos to um, direct you to specifically in which she, she talks about this information, but basically we're, end, we're in the, I think we're still in the last moon cycle of this galactic year. Um, and we're, but most importantly, the message is that we're moving into the age of the divine feminine and the divine feminine has already made some waves with her awakening and rising. And now that we're entering into the age of the divine feminine, it's only going to get stronger. And so for some individuals that are fighting the, the feminine that are, yeah, that are fighting the energies that are coming forward, yes, for you, it's gonna get worse. But it's gonna get worse before it gets better, in order for it to get better. And we have the loving and nurturing energy of the Divine Mother, of Mother Gaia, of the Divine Feminine, to nurture us and love us unconditionally through this change through the rise of the divine feminine and through <clears throat> the untwisting of both masculine and feminine energies. Now, two of swords and the moon. Don't go trying to make any major decisions. Don't go trying to make any rash decisions because you can't. Things are not clear right now. I want to say keep your thoughts to yourself, um, I, but that doesn't f feel quite right because I'm not because I would say, you know, if you want to communicate with some people that you trust, I would say do that. Um, but maybe keep your plans to yourself. I, I don't know. That's a weird. That's weird. I don't know how to better um, speak to that, but. There's indecisiveness, yes, with this Two of Swords, but the moon being there is saying that is potentially saying that uh, because that things are not clear, things are shaded, things are 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 hidden, are mysterious. So that's why you can't really see straight. But also, I heard it's illusionary, the fact that you can't see straight, the fact that you can't see clearly the fact that you can't make a decision. That's illusionary. So maybe there is a little bit of a refusal here to make a decision. I just, the, uh, uh, the strongest message here is that it's not the time to make any rash or big decisions. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the message there. Okay. Ooh, this is an intense one. This is an intense one. Okay, let's get the Oracle guidance then. Doobie doo.
closing message, oracle guidance for today. Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. Is there some, no, there's nothing else, Eric. Move on, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Closing message, please. Spirit, oracle guidance for today's message, for today's reading. One of them, because there's two here. Spirit of the Guru Mother. I'm going to take both of them. All right, so we have card number 53. Uh, Goddess Durga and Hematite, Spirit of the... I'm sorry, 52. Goddess Durga and Hematite, Spirit of the Guru Mother, and card number 33, Ascended Master Helios and Citrine, your time to shine. Citrine, Citrine, whatever. Um, I'm going to read both of them. Okay, Let, let's start with card number 33, just because it's closer in the book here. All right. We bring you the blessing of your time to shine. On the divine path, you gain empowerment through surrender and alignment with divine consciousness greater than your own. As you choose to surrender into higher consciousness through prayer and intention, you are held in a field of divine protection. You also gain strength, wisdom, and understanding. You release fear and gain love's power. You become increasingly radiant, discovering more of your own divine identity. At some point on your path, whilst this is always happening for you on the inner planes, you will be ready to perform a similar function on the outer planes in the world of forms. This is when you will be asked to bravely shine your light to help those in, lead, uh, in need, perhaps lost, in, lost or in darkness of some sort in the physical world. You know, that makes a lot of sense. And then you have card number 52, Spear of the Guru Mother. We bring you the empowerment of Spear of the Guru Mother. Sometimes there is so much choice that we struggle to commit. It is often not an issue of unwillingness to make an effort, but concern that the choice might not be the, quote, right choice. We might pray to the universe to be shown what to do according to a wisdom greater than our own. Although our free will is always in place, we are able to accept a task divinely given or reject it. The universe answers every prayer. In your heart, you have been asking for guidance to be shown what you need to do in a particular situation or, perhaps more generally, in your life at this time. You want to know the best way forward so your actions are in alignment with heaven. In response, you have now become the spear of the Guru Mother. I want to, I want to read more of that because I feel like that's a little vague. Oh, okay, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, I'm going to read these last two paragraphs. The, also, the, the oracle also comes to you with this understanding. If the divine gives you a task, you can handle it. Even if you are going to need to grow, you have it within to complete it successfully. What I really feel like this is talking about is the divine alignment, something, a, a missed, an opportunity being perceived as missed, an opportunity that was absolutely in alignment with your path, or yes, with your path, even though you may not have seen it believed it or maybe not have been aware of it at the time and thus a leap of faith was not taken right okay so now somebody is here talking about okay well what do i have to do to get this back what do i have to do to get back into alignment and this is talking about how we were the spirit was guiding someone to take some sort of leap of faith, to go in some sort of direction, gave them the opportunity to do so, and they chose not to. So now it's like, well, I didn't do it before, and things have gotten worse. How could I possibly even think to do it again or try it again? Listen closely. This oracle also comes to you with this understanding. If the divine gives you a task, you can't handle it. Even if you are going to need to grow, you have it within to complete it successfully. When the universe gives you an opportunity or life situation to work through, it is giving you a vote of confidence. The Divine Mother says to you, here is my will, I'll empower you, now go for it. 
If you want to take her advice, don't hesitate or doubt. Be as focused and forward moving as if it, you were the spear that she had thrown with her almighty hand and flawless aim, heading straight towards the center of the target. When the oracle of the spear of the Guru Mother comes to you, you are being told your efforts have divine power behind them. The situations in your life you are willing to grapple with are going to resolve far more quickly and potently than you might have believed possible. You haven't completely missed the boat. This, all, this almost kind of feels like a detour that was needed, needed to be taken for you or for someone to meet some sort of prerequisite to be allowed entry onto the boat. Ah, see how that changed? See, okay, and this is this is this is like a, a testament to the vice versa deck, or seeing some way this something this way, or seeing something that way. You can either see this situation as you've missed the boat, and now you're never going to be able to get that opportunity again, or you can see this as I needed to meet some sort of prerequisite or have some sort of understanding under my belt before I could actually gain access to the boat. And that's what I'm learning right now. Vice versa. Look at it this way, or you could look at it this way. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, the situations in your life are you are willing to grapple with are going to resolve far more quickly and potently than you might have believed possible. The power of your own efforts, amplified with divine will, creates extraordinary movement. Distraction, procrastination, and hesitation shall not touch you. Your focus will be complete and your task shall be attained. The trust you feel in yourself and the divine will increase because of this. You will gain more confidence in yourself. You'll become game for bigger and bolder challenges. The universe will be able to ask more of you and give you more because you shall be increasingly open to it. The risk you take at this time with absolute intention will bring you so much more than resolution of the task at hand. I'm going to stop there. So there you have it, guys. That was a pretty intense and long reading, but hopefully it was helpful for you. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.